Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about a problem from Lead Code. The problem name is Stone Game. Now Stone Game is actually uh, like this is a Stone Game one, but there are actually a lot of Stone Game games uh, problems on Lead Code. So I will be making all of those videos so that it will be helpful. All of those videos are not actually linked to each other, but they are very important in sense of dynamic programming and a lot of logical building part. So stay tuned for all of these like stone games videos on lead code. So this is the first problem. The first problem goes like this, that Alice and Bob plays a game with piles of stones. Okay. There are even number of piles arranged in a row. So it means that the number of piles we have are even and each pile has a positive integer number of stones on that. So like every pile, as you can see in the example, also there are different even piles and every pile has some stone in it. Okay, the number of stones. So the first pile has five stones. Okay. The objective of the game is to end with the most stones. Now the total number of stones across all the piles is odd. So there is no tie. It actually means that if you sum all the stones then the total stone number is odd, which means that it will not happen that both of them, both the players will get even number of stones. So that will not happen because the total is odd. So it always land down to a, like always one person will win. I hope you get the point. And Alice and Bob takes turns while Alice is starting the first in this whole game. Now what will happen is that in each turn, a player takes the entire pile of stone, either from the beginning or from the end of the row. So either from the beginning or in the end of the row, the player will take out a pile of the stone. And this continues until there is no more pile left. At, at each point, the person with the most stones will. So let's say that they pick out the stone from starting or ending and so on. And in that scenario, what will happen is in the end, like whoever has the most stones that have like taken out piles that has more stones, the total number of stones is more is actually the winner. Now, assuming that Alice and Bob's are playing both optimally, this is some sort of a game theory problem also, uh, return to if Alice wins the game else falls if Bob wins the game. So uh, as you can see here is in this type of problem in which there is a competition and both players are playing optimally. So this is a game uh, theory problem also. So what you can see also here is that Alice and Bob are playing the game. Now the first thing which comes to my mind is okay, why not Alice takes out the maximum stones. So what you can also observe is that Alice and Bob's are playing the stones such that they can only take out stone from the extreme ends. So Alice plays first and the entire pie is there from the beginning or at the end. So the row is there. Now Alice and Bob can either take out the stone piles from the beginning or the end, not in the middle, something like that. Fine. Now what you can see in this problem is that the best way possible. So let's just take the, the first example only that is five, three, four, five. So five, three, four, five. Now what, what you can see here is that because Alice stands is first. Okay. Now, because both of the ends now, because if you're trying to play it, like let's say greedily. So whatever is the maximum, Alice will take that. Now in that scenario, there, there's a loss here because see, both the ends are five. Now, which one to choose? If you choose the one that is, let's say this one. Okay. Then what will happen is that this will, Alice will choose it. Alice will get five points. Uh, Bob will choose this because Bob will also choose the maximum one. Both of them are playing optimally. So Bob will choose this one. Oh, now Alice has the choice to take this three or four because both of them are at the end. So Alice will obviously take the maximum one that is this one. So this will Alice will go take this and Bob will take this. So Alice will have five plus four and Bob will have C plus five. So obviously Alice will win. Okay. But let's say that in, in other scenarios also, let's say that if uh, what happened is that in this scenario, Alice will win. That is fine. Now in, in this scenario, let's say that Alice take this. Okay. Or let's say that Alice take this. Alice take this. Now four is exposed. Okay. Now what, what actually will we'll do Bob will take this obviously then both three and four will be exposed. So in this scenario also like Alice has the chance to take this and Bob will take this. And in that case also Alice will win. So in this case, both Alice and Bob, will, like in both of the cases, Alice will win. But let's just take one more case. Let us take that. I have a case in which there is a five. Okay. So let's say that there is a five and then there is hundred and then there is a one. Okay. And then there is five. Now what you can see in this scenario is that because we are doing greedily. Okay. If Alice choose this, if Alice choose this, then what will happen is that this will get exposed like this, the, the new row will become like this and Bob will somehow take this. So this will be Alice. This will be Bob. Okay. I'm, I'm making like this. So Alice will take the, any one of this extreme. Okay. So if 
like because both of them are same alice can choose any one of them because it is greedily so alice will choose this five if she choose if she choose this five then this will be exposed to the end because the row will become like this now bob will obviously will take the 100 one because that is more points and then obviously the bob will win whatever path we'll choose later but in in instead what happened is let, let's say that alice choose not this but this five in this case bob obviously have to choose this and then alice will choose the 100 one and she will win and and thus you are absorbing that like it is not a greedy solution because uh, there can be multiple options in which you have to somehow decide that whatever is the later state not the current state actually in this scenarios whenever greedy is not applying and what you can also observe is key the constraints are small that is 500 the length of this it is a clear cut like indication that it is a dynamic programming problem not a greedy when the approach you are thinking is greedy but greedy is not applying there and the constraints are small then try to think in a dynamic programming manner so that is the one of the most important hint which i actually also see in problems when i have to see whether greedy is applied here or dynamic programming is applied here now if we take the same example that is let us take this example like three 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 seven two three so this is i'll tell you what actually it is so because we want alice to win like not alice let's say that i am just assuming a game in which let's say that alice win will okay so what alice strategy will be strategy for alice will be to maximize her score and bob strategy will be to maximize his score now instead of doing that because i'm talking about only one like i cannot track of both the uh, both two arrays for bob and alice instead of that what you can do instead is uh so see Alice wants to increase her score and Bob also want to increase hers like his score. So what you can do instead of that is <coughs> bring down to it to a common number. What I mean by this is Alice wants to increase her score, but Bob want to decrease her score. Okay. Instead of you, you can say that Bob want to increase the score or you can say that Bob want to decrease Alice score. I hope you get the point. So that is how you can also like instead of now talking about two parameters like Alice and Bob individual score. Now I am talking about only Alice score. So Alice score, Alice is trying to increase and Bob's trying to decrease Alice score. So we are talking about only Alice score now. I hope you get the point. And thus, this is a min max type of problem in which one person is trying to maximizing her chances of increase, like chances of winning and another chance, another player is trying to decreases, decrease the chances of winning of that player. Min max type of game theory problems. Okay, so what we will actually do in this problem is that we will have to do dynamic programming and what we will actually have to do is we will make a memorization table. That is the most simple way. We have to first think in what decursive way we will talk about. So now what we can do is that there are two pointers, like there are two options. This is L, this is left and right. So Alice, what we'll do, like Alice has two options, either to take this or to take this. Now we'll talk about both the conditions. Okay, so let's say that this is a recursive function that is recursive RES. Now what you can see here is that in one case, we will take this score. So if you take this score, let's say that th the score of L will increase whatever is the L pointing towards that score we will add plus what we'll do, we'll call this recursive function again by L plus one because now we have taken the score. So obviously the size will decrease to this one because L plus one will like it will move L to move to the right side. So L plus one. So we'll, we will call our function with L plus one. Okay. R remain the same because R doesn't move. And what you can see is like, this is actually it. We don't have to think about that. Okay. Else what you can see here is that, or the score can be like, we can score, take the score of R plus the result like a recursive function again will L remain to this in R minus one. I hope you get the point because either we will take the L point value and increment the L value by one because you have to shorten the array or take the R value and shorten the array by moving R to the left. And both of these scores, we have to maximize it for Alice. Because Alice wants to take the score such that in the end, she want to maximize her uh, thing, but we want to minimize this thing for Bob. So maximize this thing for Alice, but minimize this thing for Bob. Okay. Now, how will you actually minimize this thing by minimizing actually means that because Bob want to decrease this value, I cannot just minimize this whole value. Okay. Minimizing doesn't matter, but what you can do here is that because Bob want to decrease the total score and Alice want to increase the total score. So let's say there's a total score, total score value. Let's say there's a total score value. So whatever is like, this is value is incremented in the total score and we will recursively call this function again, or this value is added to total score and recursively call this function again, or 
when the bob chance is there so we will like alternatively shift between both the chances when bob chance is there then what will happen we will decrease this by the score so score value of l will decrease my total value and then we'll recursively call this function again or we will decrease the score value by uh, like let's say r and then recursively call this function again and both of these values so as you can see what two parameters i'm talking about l and r in the recursive, recursive function we have to also think what parameters we're talking about so we're talking about l and r so l and r are actually defining out the range okay and also what you can see here is that they are l and r also is there so this these two parameters are actually defining out because we are only talking about one person if you're talking about two person let's say that we are talking about two person then we have to also include one more property that is whose chance is this okay zero or one but uh, we don't actually care about that because we can like shorten our dimension of searching because we're not only talking about alice score so alice is trying to increase the score and bob is trying to decrease alice score so in the end in the end after doing all of this gp recursion function if the total score turns out to be positive that actually means that alice has made her score so big that he, instead of like bob cannot decrease the score by that factor so that it will become negative i hope you get the point if the score is positive it means that alice will win if the score become negative in the end it means that bob will win because bob has tried to decrease the score so much that it will become negative and it, it actually means that bob will win because bob will score will be more higher i hope you get the point so alice will try to increase the score and bob will try to decrease the score if the decreasement score is too big it means that like Alice cannot increase the score too much so that Bob will decrease too much and uh, like eventually Bob will win. I hope you get the point. So that's the overall like logic around this problem. Let us move on to the code part so it will become more clear. So what you can see here is that we have called this stone game function in which we have first mem set our dp values so because we have to talk about a dp set. So initialize everything with minus one so that like nothing is touched initially. This is the size of the piles we have that is n. And what we call, call this function is Alice win function we have written in which we will tell that whether Alice will win or not. So these are the parameters that will be passed along this function. This is L and R that is the bounds. And this is one. One actually means that whose chance is this? Because we have to also say ki whose chance that we are playing Alice or Bob. Okay, so one which means that Alice is playing. And this is files over which we are doing this thing. If this value turns out to be positive, which means that we have to return true or false. So that is why that is in the end. So this function will return the actual value by which like if Alice is trying to increase the score and Bob is trying to decrease the score. Fine. Now what you can see here is that if the two L and R are the actually pointers, if they're like over ex like exchange over that, like if uh, L becomes greater than R, like R or H or whatever you can say, then it returns zero, which means that this is not a valid thing. Now if there becomes comes down to a single point, which means that there's only one L like element that is left, return that pile of element that is in the answer. Because let's say that there's only one element. So we return that obviously Alice will take that. So we'll, we'll return that pile element. If that, uh, so this is the base case. Now, if after the base case and recursive function, we have to check that whether the state is already present. So we will check for that state. Now, what we are doing in this else condition. Now that's the recursive part. So there are two cases, either it's the chance of Alice or Bob. So let's say that it is Alice chances. So, so turn one, which means, which means that it is Alice chance. So turn will turn out to be true. So it means that DP of L and H, what we'll do. For Alice chance, what we have seen this, we will take, like we have two options, either to take the L wala pointer value or R pointer value. So we're taking the piles of L and because we'll call this function again by changing the turn, like switching the turn because you have like, uh, 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 like this exclamation mark means that we are negating or like, uh, like changing out the chance. So initially the turn will be one, then it will become zero, then one and zero and so on. So it is like switching. So L plus one, because we have taken the L pointer value, so we will increase L by one, H remains same and piles remain same. Or else there's a second value in which piles H, like we will take the like right hand side pointer value. And again, like as you can see, the like switch the turn, L remains same, but H is subtracted by one. Like we will send the same thing. But as you can see, now we have to maximize this thing. I hope you get the point. And now for the other thing, what we are doing here is that when it is Bob chance, you have to minimize both of these values. So what we are doing here is that because Alice wants to win. Okay. So there are two things as you can see. Bob is trying to decrease the score and Alice is trying to increase the score. So what you can see here is like because Bob is trying to decrease the score, we want to decrease it as minimum as possible because Alice is trying to win. So what you can see here is that we have two options. Either we'll subtract out this L value, like the pile left value from the total score as you can see and call this function again or subtract out the right side value that is pile of H. You have to subtract it out. If you just take it like this, as you can see that subtracted out this value and call this function again. So this is like minus sciences and we have to minimize this minus sign because we, what you can see here is that Alice trying to maximize score and Bob is trying to minimize that score. 
and thus whatever is that value will turns out to be this and dp of lnh will be stored like this and like return that value so this is the overall dp problem so we only have to first in all the dp problems find have to define out the recursive function also you have to see what are the parameters on which this depends and then we have to just think over in a recursive manner what are the options we have to explore about and just write down the explorations and that's the overall how dp i actually approach out dp problem so that's the overall like code and the problem for this video thank you for watching this video till the end i will be posting out more stone game problems so stay tuned on the channel thank you